Lindsay. <laughs> you got the lead stuck under your tail, kid? So it's just about four-ish. And uh, we finished work early. So we thought we'd both come out with the boys for a little bit of a bit of a promenade. I thought we'd come through the park. I've been through the park Good. for a while, have we? Come on then. <laughs> on nip and of course today's mr bentley's birthday it's 11 today so uh, nipper is already 11 nippy was 11 in it was either april or august we're not quite sure are we we'll have to double check on the paperwork uh, oh ian we're going again. yeah um so anyway mr bentley's birthday today so he's 11 today which makes him 77 he's an old man like you, eh? Poor little burbs. His collar's slipped up quite high, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's Saturday afternoon, about half past three, and we're on our way back from North Nottinghamshire. We've done three counties today. We've done Lincolnshire, Nottinghamshire and Yorkshire. So we've been driving around and doing house viewings today. Um, the one particular that we went to see was a little bit of a disappointment. Um, it would be fine if it was just me and Ian, um, but not suitable for mum and dad. It's in the middle of the it, it is kind of right out in very rural um, and quite isolated so difficult to get to um, for or difficult to get to like doctors and hospitals and all that kind of stuff which which we're only going to need more and more as they get older um, so not particularly suitable however we did also um, look at another two, um, one which is very very promising. Um, so I will let you know more on that later. Like I said, we're on our way home now. So both the boys have been very good today. Bentley's worn out, and Nippy is definitely ready for home. So am I actually. Cup of tea. Oh, aye. Cup of tea. Would yes. Be lovely. Definitely need a cup of tea. It's Monday morning, just approaching 9.30. I'm just setting off to go to mum and dad's and also to do a little bit of shopping and to do some errands this morning. Um, one of the door latches, go to the bathroom actually, um, at mum and dad's has gone faulty. Um, one of those kind of things. So, Dad's asked me whether I'd just pop in to our local hardware store um, and see if I can get a replacement for it, which I will do. It's one of the errands I've got to run this morning. Um, and also I've got a little bit of a shopping list. It's not a huge shopping list. It's only a, you know half a dozen items or so. So I'll do that as well before getting to mum and dad's. Um, so yesterday, Sunday, um, Ian and I spent pouring um, over um, the internet property search websites uh, here in the UK um, the right move and another one called Zoopla um, for suitable properties um, yes we have found some that we're very very interested in um, but as I said to Ian I don't particularly want to pin my hopes on any of them I still want to look for contingency properties just in case a the ones that we have you know particularly like either go under offer or get sold before we get a chance to secure them so um but we keep on <laughs> bouncing backwards and forwards as to the best location um where we want to be um obviously we would prefer to be within 
easy drive distance. Now easy drive distance here in the UK is usually within like 30 minutes <laughs> of somewhere. I know it's different in America. It's like easy drive distance. It's four hours, you know, kind of thing. Um, but no, you want to be within like half an hour's driving distance from the town that we want to be in. Um, so we've kind of whittled out quite a few different areas that we think are no longer within that kind of radius of where we want to be. Um, but we keep banging our heads um, about property type. <laughs> um, our head keeps saying to us, you want a bungalow, you want at least two bathrooms. So uh, a three to four bedroomed bungalow with at least two bathrooms. So a house bathroom and at least one en suite. That's, that's what our head is telling us. That's what we're looking for. It has to have a garage and it has to have a garden. Um, but we keep coming across this stumbling block of period Edwardian houses with all the original features big bedrooms and big gardens um, that don't necessarily have both a house bathroom and an ensuite. One that we found has all of those. It has a house bathroom but it has a shower room downstairs so there's the shower and the bath that we both need. We need a walk-in shower for mum and dad. Um, a, a shower over a bath isn't really suitable because mum and dad have got to then try and climb in and out every time they want a shower. And I know it's you know once twice a day, but it can be quite difficult. Um, so yeah, we keep our we keep having fights between our head and our hearts because our hearts are telling us buy the period properties, but they're not bungalows, they're houses. So we're having struggles. So yes, most of yesterday was taken up with property searching. Um, after we'd kind of had a, a late. Sunday lunch yesterday and we kind of exhausted all possibilities and all that kind of stuff um, I just said to Ian that's it I need to switch my brain off I need to do something which is you know I don't have to think about so I just went and parked my bottom on the couch with a book and I just sat and read for a good couple of hours um, Ian went upstairs and did um, some creating on the computer he's working on some new um, art paper pads so he went and did that for a couple of hours as well so yeah so it was a bit of a I won't say stressful day yesterday because it wasn't really stressful but it was one of those days when you just feel emotionally wrung out after you've been discussing and talking about what you actually need against what you actually want and battling against head and heart it's a real difficult one it really is So today is paperwork day. It's the dreaded fill out all the forms um, for the solicitors to get the ball rolling and get them ready for selling the house. Um, we're going to have to jump through a few legal hoops <laughs> um, because since we moved into this house here, um, oops, sorry, let's move that to that side there, that's better. Um, since we moved into this house here, um, legal requirements for selling and buying houses in the UK has changed a little bit. Um, so now we have to not only prove our identity to be able to sell a house with the estate agent, you've also got to, be able to, you've got to prove your identity with the solicitors um, to make sure that you're you know, legit and all that kind of stuff. But it's not joined up because once you've proved your identity and had your, your ID verified with the estate agents, um, you've got to do it again for the solicitor. It's like I said, they don't share the information. It's all separate. Um, so this morning I was going through the paperwork and stuff and I thought, well, what's going to happen when, when I sell the house where mum and dad are in? Because that's jointly owned by myself and mum and dad. So if I've got to prove photographic ID for me, driver's license, passport, that kind of stuff, how are we going to do it for mum and dad? Because they're both 82 and they don't have driving licenses and their passports expired, you know, <laughs> a 
long time ago. So they don't have any valid photo ID. And the voter um, ID, photo ID paperwork that we got for the last general election can only be used for for voting. It can't be used for anything else. It says on the paperwork it can't be used for anything else. So I've spent about 20 minutes to half an hour on the telephone to the estate agents this morning asking them what the procedure will be for that and you know what we're going to do with the solicitors and all that kind of stuff. And I just know I'm probably borrowing trouble, um, but I just know we're going to have issues um, verifying identities. I'm beginning to wonder whether or not it's probably easier just to invest the money now while we can, um, while there's a little bit of leeway, and just get mum and dad um, passports. Um, and so that when it comes to selling, we can just slap the passport down and say, there you go. Um, it would just mean spending a couple of hundred quid um, on on getting them that ID which is, this is probably why the government do it. They insist you've got to do it this way, um, verify with photo ID and all the rest of it. And then, and then obviously because it means that more people have got to get this ID, which means they have to fork out for it, which is more money in the government's pocket. I may be just being a bit jaded. I may be a bit cynical, but that's probably why they were doing it. I mean, a few years ago, they were talking about introducing identity cards uh, and all the, you know, all those people that, were afraid of civil liberties being infringed and all this kind of stuff. We're all up in arms about it. It's like, oh, um, you know, but this identity card would have just solved a lot, a lot of problems going forward. And, you know, we wouldn't have had to go through all this rigmarole if those identity cards that have been introduced for everybody, for all adults, because we'd have all already had them. And proving your ID with those would have just been a doddle. But there you go. But it's obviously those, all those ones with something to hide are the ones that put the kibosh on that kind of stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, like I said, I'm filling out paperwork today. So there's a lot of forms to fill out um, for the solicitors about what we're leaving in the property, what fixtures and fittings are going to be left behind, you know, like dishwasher, fridge freezer, that kind of stuff, a shed. Uh, all that kind of thing, garage, all, all that kind of stuff that's going to be staying behind um, so they know um, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, just one step at a time. <laughs>
um, to assess which ones are in the greatest need to be done first, if you like. He'll decide on the order of the operations once he's seen everybody and then he'll do them one at a time. So if there's like six people and they take 25 minutes to 30 minutes to do, you're going to be stuck there for a couple of hours if you're the last one. So it could be a long day tomorrow. Uh, I know mum's, um, it's a left eye, which is the worst. I know that's the one we're having done. And he did say when we had the initial consultation that it's a really dense cataract, so it may take a little bit longer for her. So I'm hoping with her being the most difficult one, um, he'll do her first um, and not keep her till last, if you know what I mean. Because if that's the case, then we could be sat there still at four or five o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do, just um, on the off chance that that is the case, um, we'll have breakfast before we go, um, or we'll have something to eat before we go. Um, but I will also take um, some snacks. And I might even just do a couple of sandwiches um, and take, you know, some some biscuits and, and bottles of, of water and drink in a bag. Um, so just in case she gets hungry, or we are kept in there for quite a while, um, that we we, we get food. Um, she hasn't been told not to eat. So the letter that she received didn't mention food at all. And I think the rule of thumb with that, from what I can gather, is if you're just going under a local anaesthetic, which is what they do for cataracts, then there's no issues with fasting. It's only if they're putting you under a general anaesthetic, completely under and asleep, that they tell you to fast. Um, so, but she's only having like the, the local anaesthetic. It's the eye drops in to dilate the pupil and then blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so hopefully we'll be able to eat. We'll definitely be able to eat. Um, and if we are there for a while, then we can, you know, we can sort something out. I'm taking a book, I'm taking a magazine, I'm taking something to keep more occupied as well. I've got crossword books and that kind of stuff. So I'm anticipating a long day tomorrow. A very long day tomorrow. So the cataract operation. So we arrived at the hospital at about quarter to 12. Um, and mum went in for her uh, assessments and that kind of stuff. And then the doctor, the surgeon came around and did all the, the bits and pieces like I discussed previously. Um, but because she had a very dense cataract and he did say it's probably one of the densest he's ever seen, um, he did keep her till last. So we didn't actually get out of the hospital until um, I think it was 20 past six last night. <laughs> it was dark by the time we left. So um, we, Ian came and picked us both up. He brought us back to the house where my sister was waiting. She'd arrived while we were in the hospital. Uh, Ian had been to pick her up from the local train station. And then um, I popped her um, and mum back in the car and then I drove them back home again. So. I didn't get back from mum and dad's last night after settling mum down uh, and all that kind of stuff and going through all the medication and the eye drops and all that kind of stuff with my sister as to what mum needed to have done. Um, I didn't get back until about eight o'clock last night. So <laughs> needless to say, I was absolutely shattered, dog tired, but she's fine. She's gone through the operation. It was a success. Um, hopefully now it's just a slow few weeks road to recovery and then she'll be have a lot better eyesight so fingers crossed so i'm about to put my coat on put the dog's coats on and take them out for their early morning walk uh, but it's as foggy as i don't know what out there today so a proper autumnal morning so another beautiful october morning <laughs> completely cocooned by mist and fog. So, up bright and early this morning. Um, Ian went up, I got up, went to work today. Um, I'll pick that up in a second. Um, 
yeah, so it's just me and me, and Mr. Bentley, and Mr. Nippy all day together on our own. So plenty of cuddles. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible and don't forget you can access your exclusive angel only content over on my website there's a link in the description area below thank you